Welcome to this Facebook ads plus Teespring video. I know you've all been waiting for it for a very long time and I just want to say once again thank you so so much for 10,000 subscribers. It means so much to me and if in case you're wondering those balloons I did not just turn 10 it's for 10,000 subscribers that my fiance got me. But anyways I just want to say thank you so much and this video I hope you like it. I don't want to drone on too much so all I want to just quickly tell you is this video is going to be all about Facebook ads, connecting it to Teespring, linking it back and how it all works and if you can't make it to the end, I understand it's a very, very long video. It's very, very detailed. It's going to be right down to the point. And if there's anything I left out, okay, um, I said this at the end as well, but if there's anything that I left out, let me know in the comments and I can potentially make a part two. I'm happy to make a part two of everything I left out because to be honest, I don't know what all of you are thinking. I don't know what you want to see. I'm only making what I think you need to know. If there's things you still want to know and I didn't address, then let me know in the comments and I will make a part two. So before we get started, we all know this video has taken ages to make. Literally, it's taken me ages to make. I'm sure you can understand that. So do me a small favor, hit the like button, leave a comment. And if you want to be extra, extra nice because this video has taken me flipping ages to make, share it either on Facebook, Twitter, wherever, and let's try and get this to, I don't know, 5,000 likes, a couple couple hundred comments, and who knows, maybe 20, 30,000 views. That could be amazing. Right, so what are we gonna cover? Well, we're gonna cover Facebook, we're gonna cover content creation, audience research, ad creation, tracking, retargeting, and we're gonna to touch on scaling, but probably not, might, might leave that. And then with Teespring, we're gonna talk about account creation, Facebook integration, tracking, and promotions. And then, as well as that, we're going to also talk about the overview of the dashboard, the events manager, the audiences, so how to create custom audiences, that kind of stuff, and creating a Facebook page. Those are all the things we are going to discuss, and we are going to start with account creation. So let me just quickly tell you the way this video is going to work. It's going to be a series of screen recordings of me, me talking to you through a screen recording of me talking about all of these different topics and occasionally I'll come back on the screen like this and address a specific topic without my screen. And yeah, that is how the video is going to work. All I'll say is, don't want to keep on, in two minutes here. Enjoy this video. I really, really hope it helps you. I hope this helps you get started with your print on demand and just maybe even gives you a few light bulb moments or just clears some things up for you. Enjoy it. Right, so we're gonna start with setting up your Facebook ads account. So you want to go to business.facebook.com. Right, you wanna click create an account or login. Now, what you want to do is you want to log into your existing account. You don't want to create a new Facebook account for this. The reason for that is Facebook don't like it if you have two accounts. It looks spammy and fishy and just don't do it. Create a business account through your personal account, but don't worry, it will still be separate to your personal account. So let's go in and actually create this account. I'm gonna use my fiance's account because obviously I already have an account, so there's nothing to create there and I wouldn't be able to show you the process. So I'm gonna create it through her account because she's never done this before. I'll cheekily save her password onto my account. Right, now what we have to do is we have to click create account. So once we've created it, we need a name. So I'm. this isn't a real thing, so I'm going to make it as if it's for her and she likes doing art. So I'm just gonna name it Ink by Lauren, cause that's her Instagram handle for her. This oh, She makes the most incredible artwork on Instagram. You should go and check it out. It's at Ink by Lauren. I don't know why I'm shouting her out, but I feel like you're gonna absolutely love her art stuff. It's just brilliant. Right, anyways, business email. We'll just do her actual email. And let's click next. Right, and then we've got to do all of this kind of stuff. So let's just quickly do this. If it's blurred out, it's just because I don't want you knowing where I live. Now, website. If you don't have a website, that's absolutely fine. You can put your profile link in there. So your Facebook personal, your personal Facebook profile link. Gosh, that was hard to say. You can put that in there if you want. So I'm just gonna use the website that we have. Right, then click submit. And let's see where it takes us. I haven't created a Facebook account like this, like an ads account in so long. So uh, this is interesting. 
Here we go. Ink by Lauren was created. Confirm your email address. Click the link to to receive full access. I'm going to make sure we do that now. Right, now that the email has been confirmed, there's a few things that we have to go through here because obviously this looks slightly confusing and you might not understand what's going on. So there's a few things you have to do. Well, firstly, there is no ads account. So we'll have to create a new ads account, which we'll do in the business settings. And then we'll have to create a page, which obviously we need to do in the settings as well. What you're probably thinking is, what did I just create then? Well, this is the general business manager. And then on top of business manager, you need an ads account and you need a page that you're going to be running your ads through. If you're doing this for t-shirts, like you probably are because you're watching this video, you're going to create multiple pages for your different niches. Okay. And, and I mean, I don't really need to explain a lot of this because it's very, very friendly and that user friendly and you'll just be able to get it, but let's just start anyway. So we're going to go to go to business settings and we're going to create an ads account. Okay. So once you're in, this ad accounts area. So you can see this is this is what it's going to look like. It's very simple. You've got users over here and these are, well, you're here. So Lauren Richmond is here. You can add people like people who work for you, people in your team. Okay. Just clicking add and then you have to click, use their Facebook email address. Really, really easy, right? You can also give them specific access, employee access or admin access. You then have partners. I'm not going to bother about that. And then you've got the accounts. You've got pages and ad accounts and business groups and apps and Instagram accounts, and all of this fancy business stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an ad account. So you want to click add and then click create new ad account and let's give it a name. So we're going to give it ink by Lauren and currency. We're going to stick to dollars because I generally find that dollars is cheaper no matter where you're in the world. So um, if I'm in the UK, I still do dollars because it just works out cheaper in, in my personal experience. Then we want to click next and then click this ad account will be used for my business, Ink by Lauren, click create. Obviously you do your own business name. Don't obviously do this name because that would be silly. Right. Once that's loaded, we're then going to go to the next page and then we're going to actually create a page. So add account, create edit ads, all of this. So Lauren is going to have access to everything everything click assign and then click close and that's the ad account right our ad account has been created brilliant right owner ink by lauren has her own ad account now she's going to be very happy right the next thing we then have to do is create a page okay now bear in mind the page i'm creating is going to be the page that lauren is going to be using it's not necessarily going to be the page that we use for t-shirts, but the process is exactly the same. Okay. So the process of creating a page, creating an ads account, and then later on linking it to Teespring is all exactly the same. So let's click add and we're going to create a new page. We're going to call this, let's go ahead and cancel. We want to create a brand or product test. We want to do clothing, create page done. Okay. Very, very simple literally very, very simple to do. Once we've done this, we are pretty much good to go. We have our page, we have our ads account. Okay. And what we then want to do is we can literally go and look at the ads manager dashboard, which is going to be this bad boy. Well, let me get rid of this. I think I accept. And that's this. So the last thing we are going to do is we're going to add a payment method because you need a payment method to actually pay for ads. Okay. So let's go into ads manager again, and it's going to billing. Right. I'm not going to actually add a payment method here, but this is how you would add it. Okay. You want to click payment settings, right? Add payment method over here. And if you have a Facebook voucher or something, then brilliant. You can add a Facebook coupon, PayPal, or just a credit card. I use my American express, right? Very simple. Then you would click continue. You have now created an ads account a business ads account as well. So it's not on your personal account. And the reason, the reason, let me explain quickly. The reason you want a business one over a personal one is Facebook tend to like shutting people down. And if you have a business one, you don't lose all your information. Whereas if it's a personal one, you can lose all your audiences, all your, all your information, everything. So we've now learned how to do a business one. We've learned how to create a quick page. We've learned how to set up the billing. And later on, we're going to actually connect all of this to Facebook, create pixels. I'm going to talk you through the overview of the account. But for now, that is setting up a business ads account.
Right, now that we've done that, we're going to move on and create a Teespring account. I know I have a Teespring account already, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to be creating a brand new one starting from scratch. So that way it's just fair, right? It just makes more sense. So sign up, let's click sign up, email. Let's do a password, I'll get off Facebook password. Oh, don't use. Let's do a simple password because I don't care about this. Account, and then I want to click, oh, all the ones with traffic lights. Um, Verify. Click sign up. Save the password. Super simple. Okay, get started. What are you looking to do on Teespring? We are looking to make money. So, create and sell. Continue. About you, I am a marketer. Um, yeah, okay, I'm a marketer. I'm going to name this Ink by Lauren. I don't know why I'm going. I'm doing this all through her name, but you know what? Hopefully, this is gives her a good enough shout out that she uh, likes me even more. So this is this is it. Okay, you can create a store, but we we actually want to just go straight back to our dashboard. So we're gonna go back to our dashboard, forget about creating a store, and this is our account, okay? We have made zero money, we have nothing. This is the overview, let me get rid of this because I know how to use Teespring. Right, this is our overview. Look at all the money we've made, zero profits. Ah, it's fun. Okay, that is setting up a Teespring account. Now, just to continue the setup quickly, we want to add a payment method, so payout. So firstly, we don't have anything, so we can't do that. But what we can do is we can go to settings. Public name can be Lauren, oops, Richmond. I'm not gonna put a phone number in just because I don't want to. And change your default city is not Halifax, but whatever, I don't care. We'll leave that at that. Right, launch preferences, display, share options after launching. Right, feature my listing in Teespring's Boost Network. Yes, we'll tick that because you never know what can happen. Um, that's your email, that's your password. Set your PayPal address. This is the address to get payout. So you want to put in a PayPal address that actually exists because that's how you're gonna get paid, right? If you don't wanna do PayPal, you can also do Payoneer. And then you can do two factor authentication when you're logging in just to make it a bit more secure, right? Once you've done all of that, you're good to go. And later on in the video, we're going to actually talk about the marketing side, right? So we've got this marketing. So we're gonna to go to Facebook marketing in particular. What we're gonna quickly do so that we make sure we have access to everything here is we're just going to quickly create a design. It's going to be a nothing design. It's, I'm going to make this in timey, less than a minute. Okay, so let's just quickly do this. Uh, add text, this is going to be a test. All right, gonna click continue, continue, test, test, and let's publish listing. Oh, that was definitely, definitely under a minute. All right, now that we have an actual listing on our store, let's go back to our dashboard. Let's go back to our dashboard, let's go to marketing. And now we can see we have access to all of these different things. So later on, we are going to be adding a Facebook pixel here and that's how we're going to be able to track things, okay? So what we've done so far, let me just recap. We've created our Facebook ads account, our Facebook page. We've now created our Teespring account. And if you're asking why you're using Teespring, why you're not using Shopify, well, this isn't really the video for that, but just to put it really, really simply in a sentence, Shopify costs every single month. It's a lot more complicated to set up. You've got to link Shopify with another company like Print, Printful or another print-on-demand company. Teespring is everything. You've got the website, it houses it for you, it does everything for you. And if you actually have a look, the, the, the page, right, this is what your page would look like. Obviously, you can have much more information here. You've got your T-shirt here, add to cart. You've got all the the customer service, everything, the, the Teespring take care of everything. And it's just, I wanted to do it with Teespring because I thought it would make your life a lot easier, just especially if you're, especially if you're new. Okay, so that's it, we're gonna move on now. Right, the next thing on the agenda, now that we've done the Facebook account and we've created the Teespring account, we want to combine the two, we want to link them together so that all the data that's, that's happening on Teespring is being tracked in Facebook and it makes creating ads and tracking ads and 
creating audiences so much smoother and better and more accurate. So this is our Facebook ad manager, you know, the homepage looking kind of thing, right? Obviously there are no ads, we've just created this account. What we want to do is we want to click the burger bar thing over here and we want to go over to events manager, okay? And when we're in events manager, what we'll be able to see here is we'll be able to see data sources, Facebook pixel, offline events, and app events. What we want to do is we want to get started with a Facebook pixel, okay? We're going to name this Teespring. We're going to, we don't have to put our website in, so we're gonna leave that, and we're going to click continue. Once we've done that, we are going to be able to manually add the pixel code to our website or add the code using the partner integration. Now we can use the partner integration. There should be a Teespring integration here. Right, there you go. Click Teespring over here. Right, let's click continue. Select marketing. This is, this is basically telling you how to do it. So it's very, very simple. You have to select marketing from the drop down. You have to paste the pixel ID. So this is my pixel ID. So I'm going to do this whilst I'm looking at this. So let me go back to my homepage. So marketing and then Facebook, paste it, click update, right? And now click continue and then verify the connection, enter the URL for this website. So let's say, let's enter the URL for this t-shirt. So copy link, let's put this in here, send test traffic, this should go to my t-shirt, wonderful, okay, so hopefully that should all link up, sometimes it's a bit slow, sometimes it doesn't find it straight away, but there we go, active, oh, how easy was that, now we need to do continue, we need to set up some events, what's an event, an event is basically what the customer or potential customer does, do they add it to their cart? Do they buy it? Do they just visit the website and not do anything? We need to create some sort of events, all right? So as it says, you can use the events setup tool to add standard events and parameters without the need to code. You, ju you can just put the website in. So let's do this as one event. Uh, okay. This will just be open website this should open the t-shirt web the t-shirt page i do have pop-ups blocked though so one minute there you go right now let's click continue and done set up complete verify your events in events manager okay so we can test events in events manager and look how cool this looks, right? This is our new events manager page. This is our pixel, Teespring. We have diagnostics, history, settings, and overview, and we can create custom conversions. Oh my gosh, there is just so many things we can create. So for example, a custom conversion is if they visit one particular page, what does that mean? What's it worth? So I can say if they, if they visit the thank you page, right? So if they go through, they buy the t-shirt, they add to cart, they proceed to check out, they go to the thank you page, right? I can make that over here. Where's that gone? Where's it gone? Here we go. I can put the thing in so I can say it's worth $12, right? And I can say it's a initiate checkout, right? Or there's an add to cart. There's a complete registration. There are so many things as a purchase. I would make that a purchase. I'd name it bought test T, right? I'd put the link in there and I'd click create. And it's that simple. And like I said before, the reason you want to put all of these different custom conversions and everything like that is when we're creating ads, right? And when we're tracking those ads, we want to be able to see which ads are making us money. If we have five ads going for one design, we want to see of those five ads, which one has brought in sales and which one's brought in the most sales. So if we create an ad and we include these custom conversions, the custom conversion will track everything from the moment the person clicks the ad, 
goes to the page and then either buys or adds to cart or then leaves and we will we'll be able to see who like we will see their name and stuff but we'll be able to see which ad has generated what has generated sales has generated uh, people just going to the checkout page and the reason why that's good is not only will we be able to see which ad is working and which ad we should put more money into but we can also create audiences based off of these events okay so if there's 500 people who visited the page but didn't even add it to their cart we can create a custom audience to those 500 people saying something like, so you saw this t-shirt, but you didn't want to buy. Well, can I um, entice you with free shipping, right? And then you, that's a bam, that's another ad, right? Or can I entice you with 25% off just today? And then all of those people that have already seen it might go and actually buy it, right? That's the brilliance of using a Facebook pixel. And that's why, honestly, I love Teespring because it is just so simple. It's just there, it's right there. And it's, it's so simple, everything, oh, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And then again, you've also, you're gonna have, it, it will show up all in here as well, but we're not gonna worry about this. So that's setting up a Facebook pixel and linking it to your Teespring account. Right, let's talk about audience insights. What is audience insights? Well, here you can see I'm back to my main ads manager page, okay? We want to click this burger menu again and we want to scroll down all the way to analyze and report and click audience insights. Now, the first time you click this, or everyone on Facebook, yes, the first time you click this, you want to, well, something will pop up where you can take a tour, okay? And I don't want to take a tour, but basically you can take that tour if you want to, if you feel you'll be more comfortable using it. But basically, what is this? Why is this so brilliant? Well, this is all of Facebook. Imagine imagine a database of every single person that is on Facebook. That is what this is, okay? And this is the place where I would do most of my audience research to see if there is an audience on Facebook that I can target one of my t-shirts to. So let's say I want to make a Father's Day t-shirt. Okay, I want to make a Father's Day uh, uh, I don't know, should I steal someone's t-shirt just for this idea or should I come up with a new one right now on the spot? Um, okay, I'm just gonna take someone else's just because I can't bother thinking of a design off the top of my head. But let's say we're going to target a Father's Day shirt and the shirt is going to say, Dad, the man, the myth, the legend. Okay, it's a very, very popular design. I don't recommend you doing it because it's 100% taken. But how would we, if I've got that like kind of idea in my head, how would I then go about trying to figure out who to target? Well, firstly, I've got my location, which is United States, okay? And then if I wanna target other places like Canada, United Kingdom, I can just add them here and you'll see the overall people over here, 150 to 200 million. That is how many people we're targeting at the moment. We wanna get that number down to about 100 to 300,000. So what we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with women only because we don't wanna target the actual father because I don't know of any father that buys himself a gift. We wanna target the wives, okay? So that should update this to about half, right? Well, maybe a bit more than half because it's 55% of all people on Facebook are women. So now we've got down to 100 to 150 million, just a tad too much, I think. Right, so we now have interests or we have, um, within interests, we got we can go down to advanced and we've got all these added categories, okay? So we're gonna obviously click relationship status, we're gonna say married, okay? Now you can be um, single and a dad, I'm not saying that, but I'm just trying to whittle down this audience just a tiny bit. Okay, now the newlywed one year is very, very cool because that can be another whole t-shirt design. So this kind of opens up your mind to what all of this is. So we can see here relationship status, right? We can see obviously all of these have gone down to zero and married has gone up because that's the only one we've ticked. And then we've got ages. So 26% of 35 to 44 year olds are married, right? So a good rule of thumb here is you want to only target over about 10 to 15 percent so for example 18 to 24 year olds i'm not even going to bother so i'm going to start at 25 here okay and that gets rid of that one and all the way down to 65 plus again i'm not going to bother so much so i'm going to go to an 18 is not so crazy and i want to whittle it down so i'm going to go to 54 so now i'm targeting women who are married um 
between the ages of 25 and 54 years old. And we can see the audience has gone down to 20 to 25 million people. Now we're missing out quite a large uh, thing here, right? We need, we need them to be parents. So we want to click, we want to click parents. We, now we can either do, this is really, really interesting. And by the way, just to touch on my previous point of why I selected married over single or in a relationship or engaged is because we are targeting the other halves of this relationship. So we're not targeting the father, we're targeting the wife. And there's a good chance that if a parent, if, if we select single, it probably means single mother, they aren't looking to buy their ex or the, the father of the, the their kid a present for Father's Day, right? I think we can all assume that. That's why we want to select marry, just the, the happiest of people, even though it doesn't mean anything. Um, we want, want, then want to go back here, okay? And we can see parents. We can either take all parents or we can select specific years. This is super interesting because by selecting specific years, for example, if we select childs from 13 to 18 years old, right? We can then target a t-shirt to them based on like teenagers, right? Like teenagers who are rebelling so a proud father of four rebellious teenagers something like that or a proud father of a rebellious teenager i'm not like my ideas aren't flowing at the moment but my point is we select all parents and now the audience goes down to 10 to 15 million people now it's still quite a lot so what we can now do is and this is a very very clever idea because the reason you look at this audience insights before even thinking of a t-shirt design is you can go to places like page likes and you can see what this audience actually likes and you can try and come up with t-shirt designs around what these people like. So you've got interest, bring home browns, coupon divas. Um, remember a lot of these interests are the women's interests. We need an interest that could kind of mix between both of them. Okay. So you've got pottery barn, you've got all of these little ones. So what we're going to do is we are going to put in the interest. Where's interest gone? Interest, interest, here we go. Interest is up here. We want to put in the interest. Um, second amendment, okay? Generally, if the wife is very interested in the second amendment, so is the husband because it makes a lot of sense. We've now got 40 to 45,000 people. Brilliant. And we can see what else they like. The well-armed women, LLC, box tips for education, second amendment, you had me at camo, gun owners of America, national association for gun rights. Okay. These are, these are basically things that everyone in this audience has in common and we can really get an idea for a potential audience that we can target. So these are pages, second amendments, the well-armed women, right to bear arms. Um, so we can put in here, let's see the right arms Does that show up right to keep and bear arms. Okay. I don't know if that's going to change. Ah, so that added another 40 to 50,000 people to our audience. And then it whittled down the rest of this and it made this even more targeted. So you can see affinity is how likely your audience is to like a given page compared to everyone else on Facebook. So basically everyone in this audience is 600 times likely to like this page and 229 times more likely to like this page. With affinities, you want your affinity to be over a hundred times. That's a pretty good, you know, ballpark figure to go with there. And I don't know if you're getting the power of this tool, but basically this tool is the key to finding audiences on Facebook. And then what you can do is you can either create an ad straight from this, or you can save this, or you can not save it as, and that's by the way where you can take your tour, or you can create new from this, okay? Well, not this, but start over again, new. Now, the reason why this is so good is because like I, I found the design before, right? The man, the myth, the legend, that was going to be our design. But based on some of this research, that man, the myth, the legend would have been a bit too broad and we had like 20 million people to target and that wasn't good. We wanted to whittle it down. So just by me putting in the second amendment, right? I can see, wow, I have a solid, solid audience size here, right? And bear in mind, this is just females. If I put in men here, it'll probably be a bit more, 300 to 350,000 people. Okay. And the women are obviously buying for their husbands. So what I would now do is now that I've done this research and I found all these potential people, I would now go to the drawing board 
and maybe get Redbubble, Google, Teespring and just try and let my creative juices flowing and think of as many different t-shirt ideas that are related to Father's Day and to Second Amendment or guns rights or whatever, okay? Those would be the two things that I would then go and do. And then once I've done that, right, I have my audience, I have my t-shirt design, I'm ready to actually go and start some ads. So does that make sense? Do you understand what where I'm going with this, right? Before we even look for a design, we can just go and play around in audience insights and see what's available. If you don't want to do Father's Day, let's let's just forget Father's Day and let's do a, another idea. So let's do um, newlywed, Let's do newlywed, um, I'm not gonna do parents, but I'm going to do married, newlywed one year. So you're kind of looking at an anniversary potentially present, right? And you could put something, You could, well, let's get rid of second amendments, right? But you could do anything related to an anniversary present, or let's say you can do married, forgetting newlywed, right? And then you can put in an interest like, bartender right you've got two and a half to three million married people interested in bartendering right so you can see we've got what two and a half to three million people age 25 20 54 women bartenders we can go to men we can go to all there is just this is literally what you can do for baby an hour every single day just to get your mind flowing with all the different potential ideas start writing down all different types of audiences that you can do and once you've done that you can literally then go and just start researching designs creating designs and getting getting everything going so that is audience insights with facebook let's move on to the next part of this training video Right, I just want to quickly say one thing. This entire video right, wasn't meant to, you know, show you how to create designs. It was meant to show you how to set up a Facebook, set, set, set up the Facebook account, set up the Teespring account, link the two together and create ads, what kind of ads, all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for a video that actually goes through on how to find designs, design them, all that kind of stuff, that will be a separate video to this. This video, like I said, is literally creating the different types of ads, the copy, the kind of images you have in your ads, linking them to Facebook, tracking those ads. That's what this whole video is about. So I'm now actually going to skip from the audience insights to creating your Facebook page. We already created the test page, now I'm gonna actually go in and create the elements of that page. And a lot of you, I just didn't want you to be thinking, well, you've just skipped the whole trying to find a t-shirt phase of this video. But like I said, this video isn't about trying to find a t-shirt. It's just me telling you how to link the two together and how to run a successful, hopefully successful, Facebook ads campaign for your Teespring t-shirt. And by the way, as we're just talking here, we're in the middle of this video, probably about the middle of this video. Have you given this video thumbs up yet? Have you clicked the like button? If not, now is your chance, regardless of whether or not you're liking this video, hit that thumbs up button and let's continue straight on with this video. Right, now what you want to do is you want to click the Facebook logo at the top of your business Facebook account and it will take you to this page. This is technically your homepage, even though I've been calling the other page the homepage. This is technically the homepage. So what we can do is we've got our pages here, okay? And in this video, I just wanna quickly go through creating that page. So we're gonna click go to page. We created this page a couple of videos back. Well, when I say a couple of videos, we created this page about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. And this is what it looks like. Okay, we need uh, an image. We can get rid of that and we can get rid of that. Um, we need a cover photo, we need a profile image, we need some information and if you're wondering, will anyone buy my t-shirt if I'm promoting with a page that has zero, zero, zero likes? The answer is yes, I tell you. Now, why? Why would anyone buy from a page that doesn't even have any sort of existence on this planet. And the reason for that is you've got to start somewhere and people aren't necessarily looking at the number of likes in your page, right? They're just not, they, they go straight to the, the Teespring website, they look at the shirt, they decide if they want to buy it. If they like your page, that is a byproduct of the ad, okay? So don't worry yourself about trying to get so many likes and all of this kind of stuff. It will happen as a byproduct just from running 
advertisements to your Teespring campaign. So what you can do is you can write a few posts, you can post a few images, maybe a few videos. You can just spice this page up a bit. You can add a description. I'm not gonna do that in this video because it is just super basic and I don't wanna bore you in this video, but that's what you have to do now. That's the step you're up to. Cover, profile, a few posts, maybe a description, and that's about it. You can add a button to your storefront on Teespring if you really want, and that is all you have to do for setting up your Facebook page. Once you've done that, you can move on to the next step. Now, before we make the Facebook ad and we start promoting this t-shirt, we want to entice people to actually buy it. So what I'm gonna show you quickly is how to set up promotions on your Teespring account for your t-shirt. A promotion can be money off, it can be free shipping, whatever, whatever you wanna do really. So here you can see I'm in my Teespring overview and I'm going to go all the way down here and click promotions. Okay, and then we can click, so we can do a promo code Facebook one, okay? And we can either do a discount or free shipping. So let's just do free shipping. All right, and then we have to add discounts. Uh, Facebook one isn't allowed. Let's do Facebook um, special. A discount, is that allowed? Right, there we go. Facebook special, right? And then we can have it on and it's really, really simple. Now, all we have to do is in our ad, we can say use promo code FB special. So now in our ad, we'll have that promo code and it will entice people to buy even more, right? That's all we really want to do. We now have an, a Facebook, well, we have the promotion. What we are gonna do next is we're gonna create a Facebook ad or we're gonna talk about the different types of Facebook ads at least. And in our copy or in our image, we'll be able to put in free shipping, use promo code, FB special, okay? Really, really easy, and it just entices people to buy more. So this was just a super quick tutorial, step-by-step -step on how to create a promotion, and if you get really, really stuck, you've got a little video here in Teespring as well. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Right, let's talk about the ad objectives and the different types of ad audiences. Okay, an ad, object, an ad objective, there's tons of them on Facebook, right? And you, you'll be able to see all of them when I show you the screen flow, because I'm gonna go through this with you with a screen recording of my computer, but I wanted to give you an overview first, just a quick one. We are only going to focus on three. Those three are going to be PPE, and I don't mean any masks or anything like that. I'm talking about page post engagement ads. The next one we are going to focus on is CTW, which is clicks to website, okay? And the last one is going to be conversion ads, okay? Conversion ads are really simple. You pay for a conversion. And remember how we spoke about it a bit earlier, how you can set custom conversions when people buy, when people add to the cart, when people do whatever it is they do, right? Visit the page, whatever it may be, you can pay for those conversions. So those are the three types of ad objectives we are going to focus on. In terms of the types of audiences that are, you can have a brand new audience, so new. You can have a lookalike audience, uh, and oh, a lookalike audience, I'm gonna explain how you get that, but you can also have a retargeting audience. Now, a retargeting audience and a lookalike audience go hand in hand, because you would create a retargeting audience based off what's going on with your ad. So let's say, Let's just put a scenario out there. You have a page post engagement ad, and that means you're paying for people to engage in your post. You're paying for likes, you're paying for comments, you're paying for shares. That is the objective of that ad, okay? If it was a CTW ad, the objective is getting people to click the link and go to your website. So that is what you'll be paying for. You'll be paying for people to click the link. So just going back a bit, so we're talking about PPE ads and explaining how that works with like a retargeting ad. So what we could do is we could hone in on the people who liked a particular ad. So let's say we create an ad and it gets 100,000 likes. It's a lot of likes, but let's say it does. We can create a retargeting audience based just off the people who liked that previous post or ad. Okay, and by doing that, we now have a group of laser targeted people that have already seen this post before, have already seen this ad before, know about the company, know about the offer, and we are able to actually retarget them and make another ad for them. And that is how lookalike 
is link look like um, audiences are linked with retargeting audiences because let's say we have that retargeting audience of a hundred thousand people right because it's everyone who liked the post right a, ret um, a lookalike audience is when Facebook will see what all of those a hundred thousand people have in common and how they you know are similar and then they will go and create you another huge audience you can select how big you want it to be but let's just say you pick the one million size and it will find 1 million the algorithm i don't know how it does it but it will find an audience size of 1 million people of and those people all share the same kind of interests and characteristics and likes as those 100,000 people that interacted with your original post the reason why lookalike audiences are so powerful is because they are based purely off of people who have liked your stuff right well Kind of. So a retargeting audience is based purely off of people who have liked your stuff and a lookalike audience is based entirely off that audience. So it's they haven't seen your stuff yet, but let's just say they are 10 times more likely to interact and actually like it because of the way that they have been formed. So those are the different types of ad objectives and audience types. Now we're going to talk about actually creating the ad. So we need to pick an ad type. We then need to come up with the ad copy, which is going to be, you know, the description, the wording. We then have to create an ad image, okay? Then we have to set ourselves a budget. So there's a few different methods. You can do the five by five by five method that I've spoken about, where you have five ads uh, with five audiences targeting with $5 each, right? You're not spending $25, right? So you have to, we have to kind of discuss the budget, what we want to do with the budget. Some people are talking about spending two or three dollars per day on ads. And look, you can do that, but it will just take a very, very long time. So once we've got budget, we then need to slap down the audience. We need to put the audience in there because we should already have that audience dialed down from all our previous research. And then what we have to do is just click go. We have to click start and start that ad. And then the next step will actually be tracking that ad. So let me quickly go through now with a screen recording, creating an actual ad, going through these six steps, right? The ad copy, the, the type, the copy, the image, the budget and the audience, right? And let's go through and actually create an ad. We're now going to be doing a screen flow of creating the ad everything from the ad type, the ad copy, the ad image, the budget, the audience, all right, all of it. And I'm gonna show you my exact funnel of ads that I would use for creating a t-shirt. And it's not so simple, not so black and white. And I'm sure this is the part of the video you've all been waiting for. In fact, probably some of you have skipped to this part of the video. And uh, you're only gonna understand this part of the video if you've seen earlier parts of the video. So make sure not to skip anything out, okay? And let me just quickly tell you, we are going to start with the ad type. Then we're gonna go to the ad copy. The ad, the ad copy is the writing, by the way. The ad image, the budget, the audience, and then we're gonna go start, right? Now we might not necessarily start this particular ad because I wanna get this video out to you today. This is Thursday morning and I wanted to get this video out to you by 5 p.m. tonight. So what I might do is I might just use, I might show you how to make this kind of ad and then show you the tracking on another ad so that you can, so I can get this out to you ASAP. So what do we do first? Well, first we're gonna go to Canva, right? And we're gonna search Facebook ad, okay? And we're gonna create a Facebook ad. Now, let me just quickly tell you the type of ad that we are doing, and I'm gonna make it for you as, a, I'm gonna then do the step-by-step -step on how to make it. So we're gonna start with a basic page post engagement ad. Okay, you're probably thinking, why? Right, let me tell you, this is this is all part of my ad funnel. Okay, there's not, I'm not just blasting a t-shirt at a bunch of people that have never seen it before. I've got a funnel in place, which worked really well for me. You've got the first level. Okay, we're gonna talk, we'll talk about three levels, right? One level one, right? And the ad is going to be a PPE, so a page post engagement ad, right? And the copy is going to be very simple. It's going to be comment down below if you would wear this. Super, super simple copy. Okay, this works for Instagram and Facebook. Let me just turn off notifications on my computer. The next we've got to discuss is the budget. So you have two options. You can either do a flat out one ad, $25 budget on it, or you can do three ads, just tweaking the ad a tiny bit, three to five ads, tweaking it a tiny bit with a $5 budget each, right? We will check in after on all the results. And then 
We are going to be making this based on the audience of fathers and the Second Amendment. So fathers who like guns. Okay. And then obviously the last thing to do is start. That's level one. All right. I feel like I'm talking about Inception with a dream, within a dream, within a dream. I just saw that movie. Anyways, level two is going to be different. It's going to be a retargeting ad or a conversion ad. And I'm going to explain later what those, those are. For now, we are just going to create this ad copy. So the first thing we need to do is get a very, very simple ad image. In, and the more simple I find works the best. So I've opened Canva and I've searched Facebook ad template, as you can see, and it comes up. The next thing I need to do is actually get the t-shirt. So let's go to listings. It'd be hilarious if there's like 100,000 sales or something. You know, it's, it's still zero because it, it just, it says test. Not very interesting tea. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to get this t-shirt. Save image as desktop. Either, you've got two options here. Either you can go into something like placeit.net um, and create a mock-up of the t-shirt that you're going to use in the ad. Or you can literally just go into, uh, into Teespring, drag or save this image delete the background and upload it into Canva. Right, so you can see I've opened this in Photoshop. I now need to select the background. So it's very simple. Just click this, click that. Pretty easy, right? Now I'm going to select, I'm going to modify, I'm going to contract by one. Okay, sorry, I'm not gonna contract by one. I'm going to expand by one. That should make it cut in a bit. Brilliant, right? And I'm gonna command J or control. I'm not, now I'm gonna click backspace, delete. There's my t-shirt on pure white background. Let me just have a look at how that cut out. Uh, it could be better. Let me see what it looks like on a color. Okay, that, that is terrible. That is beyond terrible. I don't know what I was thinking. My gosh. Right, I need to just, I need to, I need to just, my goodness me, I'm, I'm so sorry for that. That was, that was another level of just shocking, shocking Photoshop work. Right, now that's our t-shirt. Now it's still not amazing. I would always use place it if, if you can, it costs a bit of money per month. The links will be down below if you want. Yes, I'm gonna be honest with you, they are affiliate links. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. You can go directly to place it and if you don't wanna buy through me, totally understand. Um, I'm not really charging for this video, so that is kind of how I would make money from this video. But like I said, I really don't mind. It's totally up to you, I mean, there's no pressure. Right, test PNG, save this. That's a PNG, remember, not as a JPEG. Click save. Right, now let's go into Canva. Brilliant. This is now our t-shirt. Now remember we wanted a very simple ad, so we're gonna have a background. Let's go with a very basic color gradiented background maybe. You're probably thinking this is this is a rubbish ad, but you know what? These ads convert so well, so, so well, it's not normal. Okay, it's literally this simple. You All you want to do is just initiate a comment. Okay, this is just a commenting ad. So, would you wear this? Okay, let's make this, oops. Let's make this white. And now let's do a little border around it. Shape and a bit. Let's make this shape something that's sticks out a bit with color. Uh, I could wear that, I could do that, I could do that. I really want it to stick out though. Yeah, would you wear this? Okay, now, this is the ad. Now, please don't comment and be like, that is a, a really rubbish ad, because I'm, I'm telling you, you've probably been over complicating this your entire life, and it's really not that complicated. All this ad will do is initiate comments. And from those comments, we're gonna be able to build up a huge retargeting list of people that have commented saying yes, or people that have commented saying no. If you get a ton of people saying no, you spent, what is it, $20, and you know the t-shirt's not going to work, so leave it. If you get 100 people saying yes, you probably think the t-shirt's gonna work. And better than that, you can reply to every single comment saying, here's a link, 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 here's a link. Here's a link, right? So that is the ad. What we're gonna do is we're gonna now download this. I could download it at the max if I really want because I've got a um, Canva Pro account, which again, I also recommend it if you want to access 
all of these incredible images on Canva, then the link is down below. Another affiliate link. Oh my gosh, Amy, you're just doing affiliate links to us. No, not really. Uh, I think Canva Pro is absolutely brilliant and I use it for so many things, especially Instagram posts, which if you're not following me, you should go and check that out. So let's download this. The next thing we need to do is head over to Facebook and actually create an ad. So we can do this in two ways, right? We can either create a post in our page first and then promote it, or we can create a post directly in the ad. I'm gonna create a post in the page and show you. So go to, over to your page. This is my page, my test page. I haven't, I haven't done anything, like I said, like the cover. You still gotta do all of that. Let's make a post. So photo, video, upload photo. Very simple. Comment below if you would wear this t-shirt. Okay, or comment below if you know someone who would wear this t-shirt. Or comment below if this is the perfect Father's Day gift. Or comment below if you like this t-shirt. Like literally anything like that, you want to initiate a comment here. Okay, click share now. This is a very, very simple post really really simple post we are now going to go into facebook ads hang on let me just let that upload brilliant right now don't click boost post just don't click that that's not the right thing to do okay we are going to go into ads manager over here so click the burger menu and then click ads manager okay now what do we need to do? This is only going to be a Facebook newsfeed ad. We have to talk about placements as well. Don't worry. Let me just quickly explain this page to you, okay? You've got your account overview over here. So this is everything, your performances, your spend, your how many ads you've done, your total reach. You don't have to worry about campaign. Uh, you don't have to worry about account overview. You've then got campaigns, ad sets, and ads. So. Facebook ads are split into these three categories. Okay, you start with the campaign, which is going to be your your campaign type, like your objective. You've then got the ad set, which is going to be your audience, your placements on Facebook, that kind of stuff. And then you've got the ad, so that's gonna be the actual image. Okay, and Facebook split this into three things, like I just said. So, and I'll explain to you the three things. And this, it's brilliant because this makes it so much easier to track. Let me X out of those things. I've got more space. Click create an ad, and then it will take you to this kind of page, okay? And now you can see all the objectives we were talking about, right? You've got traffic, that's clicks to website. You've got engagement, that's page post engagement, right? You can see post engagements, page likes, event responses. You've got conversions. Now the ones we didn't talk about were app installs, video views, lead generation, messages, store traffic, Catalog sales, there's a new video coming out about the store traffic. Um, catalog sales, reach and brand awareness. Okay, so like I said, don't overcomplicate yourself. It's just these three, traffic, engagement, conversion. So we're starting with a traffic ad, okay? We need to name this ad. Would you wear this? And then name it with the T, so test T. Okay, post engagement is what we're going for. Click set up ad account. All right, so we need to actually set up our ad account. This will, be, this will only happen the first time you do this, okay? Once, once you've done that, it will never happen again. And now we are up to the second level, okay? So you can see here on the right-hand side, you see on the, right, the left-hand side, sorry, you've got campaign, so that was the first tab. You've then got, forget that one, because that's only if you've never done it before. And you've then got ad set, which is the second tab, right? That's the audience, the placements, the budget, and the schedule. And then you've got ad, which is the third tab, which is the identity, the creative, and the tracking, okay? Brilliant. So we need, we don't have a custom audience, so we need to do uh, edit. And now we can put in some people and then we also wanna edit ages. So how are we gonna do this? And we wanna edit location. So let's say United States, because Second Amendment does not exist in the United Kingdom. Right, we put in United States. We've got our estimated 220 million people. It's a bit too many. So we now need to break this up into ages. I'm gonna show you a very, very quick way after I've made the ad on how to split this up into ages, but for now, we are going to do ages 18 to 24. No, no, we're gonna make three ads. So we're gonna do 18 to 30. I'll then do 30 to 50, and then I'll do 50 plus, okay? We need some targeting. So we need, well, let's go and do demographics parents, 
all parents, parents all, okay? We then need to target females because there's no point us targeting men buying their own shirt. In which case, this actually makes me think, okay? This makes me think what you want to actually do is you want to change the wording on your post saying, not would you wear this, would your husband wear this? That is good. Wow, Shimmy, that's brilliant. So you want to write on the post, would your husband wear this? Or um, would you buy this for your husband? Or something like that, but that's brilliant because then you can actually know if you are targeting the right wives. So we're now targeting women who are parents. Let's say that they are married as well. Narrow, okay, so let me explain to you what I just did. Instead of adding another interest into this tab, right? Instead of doing that, I click narrow audience. What narrow audience means is people have to be parents and they have to be what I put in here. So I'm gonna put in demographics, I'm gonna put in relationship, relationship status, status, married, okay? Now, there's 1.8 million people who are married with kids. Right, if I put this in the same block, if I put married in here, right, if I put married in here and I got rid of this married, you can see how the audience is huge, four point six million people. The reason for that is because doing it in the same block means I'm targeting people who are parents and or who are married, okay? So rather than targeting um, parents with kids, like you have to be a parent with a kid, I'm just targeting parents and I'm targeting people who are married. There's no connection between the two. So that's why you want to not have them in the same block. You want to narrow them down. So let's narrow them down. And then you can also see how the audience gets a lot smaller when you narrow them down. Right, and now we need to narrow it down further. One more step, and that is the Second Amendment. So we've got second amendment, that's gonna jump the audience down really small, so we need to go a bit bigger than that. The NRA, uh, 59,000, NRA again, let's see what else comes up. NRA news, friends of the NRA, a bit small. NRA gun club, a bit too small. So what we would now want to do is we've got 60,000 people, it's very, very small. However, remember we are only initiating comments, so if we can get a good, maybe a couple hundred comments, we can create a retargeting audience, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, and then we can create a lookalike audience. I've spoken about this before, a bit earlier in the video. We can create a lookalike audience and get over a million people in that audience that are similar, Second Amendment, Friends of the NRA, married with uh, kids, that kind of stuff. Now, if we wanna expand this just a tiny bit, one of the best, best things to target are magazines. Because if someone likes a magazine on Facebook, you can probably bet that they get that magazine. And if they get that magazine, you can bet that they're quite a fan of that like interest, right? If, for example, with me, I get Top Gear, which is the car magazine, you can be sure that if anything car related is advertised to me, I will click or interact with it just because I love cars. And people will be able to see that because I like Top Gear and I and if I like Top Gear, I get Top Gear. So I would say definitely do some research. I'm not saying you should do this exact audience, but I'm saying if you were to, do some research, find some magazines. I don't even know what they would be called and then put them in. So Garden and Gun Magazine, that's quite funny. Right, 62,000 people. So you can see I'm slowly building up. And if you're thinking, why is this in the same block? Well, the reason for that is I split my blocks up into types. So I've got my parents, which is one type, married, which is another type, and then general interest, which is another type. If I split this last block into four separate blocks, that means that you have to be a parent, you have to be married, you have to like Second Amendment and Friends of NRA and Gun Garden and Gun Magazine and National Rifle Association, you're gonna be left with like six people. So that's why the interests, the broad interests should be coupled together. Sometimes it's worth it to, to have different blocks for the interests, but that's only if the interests are millions and millions of people. These interests are very small. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to, we can either save this audience or we can just remember it. So. We're not gonna save it because I don't have no reason to save it. 
And then we want to go to placements, okay? This is manual placements. And remember, we're still on level one, okay? Just level one. Right, now on manual placements, we want to untick Instagram, we want to untick audience network, and we want to pretty much just tick Facebook newsfeed. The audience might go down slightly, so you can see it's gone down 4,000. We don't want in-stream, and we don't want in-article. This is just getting comments. Right, 58,000 people, okay, lovely. We are only on the Facebook newsfeed. The Facebook newsfeed, as I'm sure you know, is when people are just scrolling through Facebook, that is the newsfeed. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to do post engagements. Now, there's different ways of actually doing this. So you've got cost control. Cost control actually, like, it kind of like sets a, a limit on what you can. It controls your, your, your spend, basically. I'm going to leave that because... I don't want to do that. But yeah, like as it says here, your cost control is the cost per post engagement you want Facebook to try and stay under. Gonna forget that. Right, now we're doing this in three ads, so I'm gonna do five dollars. Okay. Run my ad continuously, it's starting today. Yes, I will pause it when I want to. Click continue. We are now up to the last section. So we've done the, the, the ad cat we've done the campaign, we've done the ad set, and now we're doing the ad. Right. We can do two things, like I said, we can either create an ad, so single image, and I would put the image in, so I'd click that, I'd upload the image, right? Well, I would try and click that, and it wouldn't let me upload the image, but I would click that, add image, there you go, add, add image, okay, very, very simple. Or, like we've done, we can use existing post, okay? Click select post, Click this post that we've just created, click continue, and that's what it's gonna look like on the newsfeed. It pretty much stands out, right? Comment below if you would wear this t-shirt. Remember, we wanna change that writing to comment below if your husband would wear this t-shirt, or comment below if you would buy this for your husband, okay? And then all the women will say yes. What you might get is you might get some women not saying yes because they don't want their husbands to know that they would buy it for them, but it's absolutely fine because Either way, the women are going to say yes. The men might even reply to the women's comments being like, oh my gosh, get this for me. And it's, you start building up a huge buzz, which is brilliant. Now, you can add a button to go and buy it. But remember, this is just purely a page post engagement ad. And let me tell you, on Facebook, if you run an ad with no links out of Facebook, that ad is generally a lot cheaper. As soon as you add a link to leave Facebook, the ad gets a bit more expensive because Facebook don't really like it when you you're trying to get people away from Facebook however obviously down the line you're gonna to have to do that which is absolutely fine that the reason why we want to make this ad first is because we want to make a laser targeted audience so that when we do eventually run an ad with a link leading out of Facebook the audience is gonna be so laser targeted it's still gonna be really really cheap really cheap clicks really cheap you know website visits once we've done that, this is, this is pretty much it, it's very simple. You want this Facebook pixel to be ticked, so Teespring pixel. Not that it matters because this doesn't lead to Teespring at all. And then you want to click confirm. Okay, once you click confirm, I'm gonna click confirm. And I need to set up my ad payment, obviously. So let me just quickly do this and then I'm gonna cancel it because I don't obviously wanna do this. So nobody look. It's very user friendly. It's very, very user friendly. Literally, you put in your payment method make, after making your first ad and bam, you're done. Confirming your items. Now, remember, I'm making three ads and I'm gonna show you how to do this using this homepage dashboard looking thing now, okay? This is the cool part of this, this video. We've got the campaign, which is would you wear this test tee? If we go into the campaign, so we tick it and we go ad sets that is the we're targeting 18 to 30 year old we can edit this name actually to be 18 to 30 year olds um women and then we can also put in the interest that we use okay right then we go a level further and we go into ad sets and in the ad set we've got the actual post so this is the post we're doing so don't get confused this is all one ad it's just the different layers of the ad Okay, remember this whole ad is level one. Level two would be the retargeting ad, but we're not talking about that just yet. This whole ad is level one. And one thing we have to do is we have to create a duplicate of this ad, because remember we wanted to create three ads targeting three ages, 18 to 30, 30 to 50, and 50 plus. So what we would do is very simply, we wouldn't duplicate the campaign, 
because we don't need to duplicate the campaign. We would duplicate the ad set. So we'd go into here and we click duplicate. Okay. Now there's two ways of doing this. We can either do it like that, right? And then click duplicate over here, or we can open it so we can click edit and something will pop up along the side. Brilliant. Let's see how this has popped up along the side and you've got it here. You've got your campaign, your, um, oh, I forget what it's called to be honest. You've got your campaign, you've got your ad set, and then you've got your ads. So let's do that again. You've got your campaign over here, your ad set and your ad. So what we want to do is three things here. Click duplicate, 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 original campaign, click duplicate over here and it will pop up just underneath. Brilliant. Okay. So this is the copy. So first now we want to change this to this age to 30 to 50. We want to go down, down, down. We want to edit the age. Remember we're still targeting women. We want to go from 30 to 50. This is how easy it is, by the way, to duplicate your ads. Oh, it's just brilliant. 30 to 50, the audience size is 410,000. Now that is interesting. That makes me, re makes me feel like there's a lot more people who like guns from the age of 30 to 50. So this is, looks like it's already going to be a pretty good ad. And we're still targeting the same parents who are married, um, who like all of this. I don't know if my married thing is here. It might have disappeared, but whatever. That doesn't matter because it's not a real ad. We're not doing this. So click publish. Right, then he gets published. And now we want to do that again. All right, we want to duplicate that again, except this time we want to add the ages 30 plus. So let's quickly, no, I don't want to duplicate the post. I want to duplicate the ad set. So don't duplicate the post, it's the ad set, right? Click duplicate again. Let's change this to 50 plus. Let's get rid of that. And now we need to do edit age. We've got 50 to, well, we're going to be able to do 65 plus, okay? Click publish. This is 50 plus now. And 670,000 people in this audience. That is pretty cool. Right, now we can go back and have a look at this. This is, oh, I love the look of this. It just looks really, really good. It's so neat. You've got your campaign, right? And you'll have a different campaign for all of your t-shirts, right? Or maybe if you're doing a completely new audience, you'll have a different campaign. Then inside the campaign, you've got your ad set. So here we're targeting 50 plus, 18 to 30 and 30 to 50. And the reason we've done this, the reason we've split this up is now we can see which one will have the cheapest post engagements and we can go further with that ad. So we know who to target. And then we've got the actual ad, which is, you know, it says no results found, but I'm not quite sure because there is, uh, cause it's still in review. It is still in review, but it would pop up here, which is the actual ad. That is creating your first Facebook ad. It's really that simple. Okay. And that is level one. Remember, we've got level two and level three, which we're going to discuss. Okay, in this part of the, the, the video, now I wanna talk about tracking, okay? And I just have to quickly say, we are not gonna be tracking the ad I made just recently because as I said, it's, it's Thursday today and I really wanna get this video out to you today. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter how well that ad does or doesn't do. It, it, it just, the t-shirt says test on it anyway. The idea of this video is just to show you basically what tracking would look like, okay? So on another ads account, on my brother's ads account, the reason I'm not using my ads account is still is just because I'm trying to log in and I'm having a bit of issues. But anyway, it's a boring story. Um, this is our ads account and this is an ad we ran for an offer, right? One of our Amazon thing offers, right? And we had, so as you can see, we've got the campaigns, the ad sets and the ads. Okay. And I explain what this means. So what we want to do is we want to go into the Simon Cow ad, and this was a conversion ad. Let me just mute my phone, it's annoying. This was a conversion ad, okay? So that means we were paying for a particular thing to happen, and that thing was people to sign up to an email list, okay? So that's why we can see 31 signed up to the list. We got a reach of 8,894 impressions of $14,000, $15 per sign up, $470 spent. Right, and then it wasn't a video, so it didn't really have any of that. Okay, so Simon Cow ad. We want to click this, so I've ticked this. I've gone into ad sets, 
And this might look familiar to you because I split this up the same way I split up my um, ad just before, right? I split it up into 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and 50 plus. And I had a very simple $5 each, okay? And you can see, well, I may have had a bit more because I upped it, but this is $60 daily split between all of these different ads. Really, really, really simple, okay? Now, what can I see from this, right? This is the, this is the important bit of tracking. This is, this is not gonna be anything light bulby or brain wavy for you. You're just gonna be able to see what I see, right? And I can see that 50 plus got 29 signups for $13 each. So in my mind, 50 plus got the most signups. There's gotta be something there. There's gotta be some reason for that. So I would do more research into the 50 plus market for our product, right? And then you've got 40 to 50 cost $56, flip it heck for one sign up. You can be sure as hell I'm never targeting 40 to 50 olds again. And then you've got 30 to 40, one sign up, $21, also a bit expensive, but not so bad. And then 20 to 30 olds, no sign ups. Okay, now you could probably say, well, this only reached 800 people, this reached 5,000 or need 6,000 people. Yes, that obviously makes a difference. But my point for this video is you can imagine if this is a page post engagement ad and you've got your four ads running, the results here are going to be the cost per page post engagement. So it would say like one cents, five cents, 10 cents, and then also the reach, the impressions and all of that kind of stuff, right? So here the results will say, let's say 300 post engagements. Over here it will say cost per post engagements and then here it will say amount spent, okay? Now the reason why this is good is if we look at our ages, we did ages 20 to 30, 30 to 50 and 50 plus, if you remember, if we see that 50 plus, right, has the most results and the cheapest, cost per engagement, we know that's a good age to target, okay? That is that is pretty much, in essence, tracking. I don't wanna to go too complicated with it because tracking really isn't complicated, but in essence, that's tracking and you have got to track. And tracking obviously gets a lot more complicated when you do conversion and click to website ads. With a PPE ad, there's not much tracking involved except for the price because you're not going to the website. But as soon as you start doing retargeting ads, tracking is vital to see who is actually buying so that you know which ad to put more money into because you only want to put more money into the ad that is making you money back. You've got to have a positive ROI, which is a return on your investment. So let me just quickly talk to you a bit about retargeting because before we get into the whole creating an audience, how to do that and then how that works and how to retarget, I've got up on my screen here, as you can see, okay? This is retargeting. You can create a retargeting audience. And by the way, if you don't know what retargeting means, it's very simple, it's in the word. You target someone once, right? And then if you target them again, you are retargeting them, okay? Really simple. So retargeting, you've got three different types. You've got targeting, retargeting someone who interacted with your ad. So let's say they left a comment, they liked it, they shared it, they watched the video or whatever, right? That's one type. The next type is landed on the sales page. So they clicked your ad and they landed on your sales page. That's another type of audience, right? The next type of audience is landed on your checkout page. And let's just say a bonus audience is they bought it. Okay, and if they bought it, you can target them new t-shirts, new ads, new things. Then you can see what I've got here. I've got this lookalike with a weird squiggly arrow going to those three. The reason for that is those three are audiences on their own. Okay, so those will be three separate audiences. And then what you can do is you can create a lookalike audience based off of those three one of those three, so you can base it off each of them, okay? And Facebook will use all their fancy magic algorithm tricks and they will create an audience up to, I think, a million or something like that. I'm gonna, we're gonna do it, so you'll see. Um, they'll create a huge audience of the people that interacted with that ad, which is just brilliant. So that is retargeting. Let's go in and actually create some retargeting audiences and some retargeting ads. Let's create some retargeting audiences. Now I'm using a different um, ads manager account as you can probably see and don't worry, this isn't fishy. Um, the reason I have to do this is because on the ads account that we created brand new, there are obviously, there's, there's no ads, there's no there's no audiences, there's nothing. I can't, I can't take an audience because I haven't created any ads on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my current ads account that we actually use or Josh's ads account and create an audience based off of some of those posts. So what you want to do is you want to go into, I'm in my homepage, you want to click this 
three dots or nine dots, you want to click audiences, all right? And then that should pop up this page. Uh, let's have a look, click exit over here. And that should pop this up, okay? Now, what we want to do is we want to click create an audience, okay? And we can create a custom audience, like I told you, or a lookalike audience. So we're gonna do a custom audience. And there's a few different types. You've got website traffic, app activity, offline activity, customer list, or you can use Facebook sources for video, lead form, instant experience, Facebook page, events, and Instagram business profile, okay? Right, so the way to do this, and it's a bit of an annoying way, and this is the reason why we have multiple pages for multiple niches, and maybe even sometimes multiple pages for multiple t-shirts, is <laughs> Facebook, for some annoying reason, don't let you create a custom audience based on people who reply or comment on a singular post. It's based on all posts. So for example, on my page, I click my page and then I, everyone who engage with your page or people who engage with any post or ad, okay? So that's what I would click and then I would name it, right? Now the annoying thing is you're probably thinking, well, I don't want them to create an audience based on any post or ad because I just want them to do it based on one post and ad. And you're right, you are right. Now the way around this, and it's just a little hack, is you create the ad, you have one post going on your page, you run all the traffic to that post and you create a custom audience based on that post. The next time you wanna do this, you can delete that post. Let's say you've exhausted that t-shirt, it doesn't work anymore, you've done it, it's over. You wanna try another t-shirt with, and you wanna do this again and create another retargeting audience, you can delete that post and just create another new post and then again if you only have one major post going that has all the like if you if, if there's a few comments here and there on other posts not the biggest deal but if you've got one major post with let's say five six hundred comments or likes or shares and that's the one you want then you can just keep creating that individual post and deleting the old ones when you're done with them and that way you can keep your audience quite targeted if that makes sense um, create audience custom audience so the reason why I like doing the videos so much is because you can click so it's brilliant either they watch three seconds 10 seconds 15 seconds or any of these so 95% of your video and then you can select a specific video okay choose sorry choose videos over here and then I would go and I'd pick I would pick a video so I can see this one's got 3599 I'd be able to tick this right I click confirm and then I'd name it. And the reason why this is so good is because this is gonna be so targeted. People who are watching 95% of a video, 100% are interested in what you're saying, right? They pretty much watch your entire video. So that's why I like doing the videos so much. But again, we're not talking about videos, we're talking about po <laughs> posts. So that is how you would create the custom audience, okay? You go through that. And then you would come here, okay? And you can see here, these are all my diff all my different audiences, and you can see what my lookalike audience is, so these are all lookalike ones. So let's quickly show you how to create a lookalike audience, right, based off a custom audience. So you click lookalike audience, select existing audience. So I can either select one of my existing audiences based on a pixel or based on so anything. So for example, I can do based on 95% of, of funny English ad, right, and then I can do number of lookalike audiences so just one and here we go this is really cool audience size ranges from one to ten percent of the combined population of your selected ad set locations a one percent lookalike consists of the people most similar so if you go all the way to ten the audience size is going to be the biggest but it's going to be the broadest as well so try and stick between one and two percent okay I you can't even go to zero, but try and stick to 1%, click create audience, and then it will create a lookalike audience based off of that, right? Now you can do a custom audience with LTV, but don't worry about that. Just don't worry about that, okay? And then yeah, value-based sources, so these are your pixels or other sources, okay? Then you click create audience. I've already created this one, so it's not gonna let me do it again. But that's basically how you do it. And then once you've done that, once you've created that lookalike audience, what you do is, we'll go here, we'll go into Ads Manager, okay? We'll click Create Ad, and I'm gonna just quickly show you how to do it, because I, I, I didn't want this video being hours and hours and hours long. I just wanted it to be detailed enough that you kind of know what you're doing with Facebook ads, right? And um, 
this is level two, remember. So level one was the page post engagement ad. Level two is creating a custom audience based off of that ad and then creating a lookalike audience, okay? And then level three is creating a custom audience based off of the lookalike audience and just targeting that. So you probably only have like three or 4,000 people in that audience. It'll be very, very small, but it's going to be so flipping laser targeted. If people don't buy, then they are mad, literally. So what we want to do is, we want to create either a conversion ad or a traffic ad. Okay, we want to click continue. We can still create an engagement ad if you want to keep it going. If you've got a bit more money to spend, right? If you're going into this business with a bit of money, you can create an engagement ad on top of the other engagement ad and just keep the layers going. So what you want to do is it's the same thing everywhere. The only difference is where it says, instead of putting all the audiences over here, you can click custom audience and you can see all of the audiences. So I can say look alike 95%, right? And then it's going to be an audience size of, well, fewer than 1000 people. Why is that? Let's have a look. Let's edit the location. Let's exit this location and put in United States. Right, so my audience is still updating, so it's not available yet, but my battery's gonna die. That is where you'd put the custom audience. You'd go through the ad, right? You'd make them the custom ad. Now you're probably thinking, what custom ad do I make them? What copy do I have? Well, the copy can be something as simple as everyone commented they want to buy this shirt. So I thought I would make it for them. Click the link below to go and buy this shirt. All I'm gonna say to you is please, please, please don't overthink the copy. Don't overthink any of this. It's not that complicated. And as soon as you start overthinking, you're probably going to end up making a mistake. So if something doesn't work, test something else. That is the most important part of this entire video. I cannot give you the blueprint to, to success. I can't tell you what's gonna work exactly because everything is different. All audiences respond differently. All ads accounts respond differently and all ad designs respond differently. So I can't tell you what's going to work and what's not going to work. And, and if anyone's ever asking me, will this work? I can't say yes or no. I just, the only way to know if something's going to work is if you test it, okay? And like I said before, don't overcomplicate it if you're testing it. Literally a simple copy as, um, we got a resounding yes to make this shirt. So here it is, click the link below to get yours today, available for seven days only. You see what I mean? Super, super simple, oh, really easy. And then in terms of what the shirt should be, you again, you can do it on a green background, a red background, or whatever background with the shirt design, or you can use placeit.net to actually get a mock-up with a person wearing it, but don't make the picture too busy with things going on all over the place because usually that will have lower conversions. You want to draw their eyes directly to the t-shirt and then down to the button or to the wording saying buy now. Really, really simple. I hope this video made sense. I, I really don't know, but I mean, we've spoken about level one, uh, level one ad. We've spoken about level two ad, and we've addressed the level three ad. I really didn't want this video being like over an hour long. Um, and I hope it made sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this video. And also, if you've gotten this far, then well done. Thank you so, so much for watching. And let me know as well if there's anything else you thought I should have added to this video. Don't worry, no hard feelings. And I maybe can create a part two. If you want me to create a part two, that's absolutely fine.